The Big Bang was this almost uniform, but not quite area, so which formed these clumps, which pulled in more gas and pulled in clumps and more and more and piled on. You get some crazy instability happening and it spits out galaxies. But you also said that it spits out some really big stars along the way. Now, these, something's going to happen to this stuff. Yes, yeah, so we got this galaxy made up of the very first stars that formed, but some of these stars are going to die. Because as we'll talk about later, massive stars have a very short lifespan, and when they die, they might explode as a supernova or blow out winds. So you've got a picture like this one, which is a remnant of a star, a fairly massive one that's went bang at some point. And, and so this is out. and this is the gas or the material that has come from that exploding star now going off into the region of a galaxy. So what you've got is a whole series of stars that come to their end of their lives and in various ways squirt gas out and this gas mingles around the galaxy and in this simulation we can actually see this whole process. So here's a galaxy which has been simulated by our colleague Mark Krumholtz here at ANU yep. and what we're seeing is that it modelled all the different stars that form and some mm. of them die and they squirt out gas and the gas swirls around and eventually coalesces into new gas clouds. So. Uh, some of these big stars form early on. They live as a short time, as we'll talk about later, explode, but then gravity starts to pull it back together again, much like what happened with the Big Bang. Yes, so most of the gas doesn't escape from the galaxy. The galaxy's got pretty strong gravity, so it holds the gas in. So all the gas that comes from these exploding stars mingles with the gas that was already there, and maybe even more gas falling in from the Big Bang. So now you're kind of mixing gas. Yes, so as you go closer in, you can see uh, a very complicated procedure where gas clouds turn into stars which explode and squirt more gas out that in turn mixes with other gas and swirls around and forms more stars. And this whole evolutionary process goes on for billions of years producing the Milky Way galaxy that we see today. And indeed you can see some of these gas clouds in space. Mm -hmm. So here we have uh, artist impression of the Milky Way across some random desert landscape. And if you look at it most of the white you're seeing here is stars, yep. but there are these dark channels and, through it. And the dark areas, are, you know, have long been thought by some people to be the absence of stars, but actually people now know, and people even historically, like Aboriginal uh, people in Australia, have noticed that these dark patterns are not necessarily the absence of stuff. That's right. They're actually areas where this interstellar dust is blocking the light from background stars. So there's background stars behind it and there's dust, which is essentially building blocks of new stars blocking the light in front. That's right. Well, this is quite an amazing photo, Paul. I, I have to say that photographer is probably good who did it. Well, thank you very much. This is <laughs> one I took with my very elderly SLR camera behind the telescope at Mount Stromlo. Now, the point of this picture is once again, we're seeing the Milky Way and the dark clouds going through it, dust and gas. That's right. And these dark clouds, which have been made by gas that's been squirted out of stars and swirling in space, are some of the most beautiful things in all of astronomy. So let's just luxuriate in some of the pictures here. <laughs> well, and this is what people like. I mean, people see these photos and they're still breathtaking to us, right? We still like I know, to look at them. I why I got into astronomy originally. <laughs> but yet, this is actually such a critical part of the stellar process, right? It's actually in these beautiful areas that it's the beginning of a star's life. Yes, so if you want to go right back to the beginning of our sun, not all the way back to the Big Bang, it's going to be in some of these clouds of gas, in particular a dense opaque cloud called a giant molecular cloud. Yep. And we can see a simulation, oh, we can see actual examples of giant molecular yeah. clouds. This is the most famous one. This is the Orion Nebula. That's right. So famous you named your child after That I have, that's right. But it's also one that you can slightly see with your eyes if you have a small telescope. And very easy with a pair of binoculars. That's right. Uh, and let's zoom in on it. So here's a, uh, uh, a simulation for the NASA put together showing an actual flight into the middle of this Orion Nebula. And what we have here is a giant molecular cloud that formed stars in the middle. Yep. And some of these stars are very bright. That's right. And they've blown a hole in one side. And we're about to fly down that funnel at one side. And in fact, the stars are still forming here, but you can't see them in these images. They're actually forming behind a wall of dust further back from what we can see. What we're actually, actually seeing is only the edge of the stars that have exposed themselves at the front. So it's like the Milky Way where we have those dark dust lanes and the light bits around it, but there's actually another layer in front 
that we're staring at. That's right. I uh, used to do a field trip with my astronomy students here and would use the radio telescope at Tidbin Villa and map molecular emissions from this and we'd find all the cores a little bit off from where the visible light is. So here we're flying down the channel in the middle of these things, but actually beneath us in the opaque dust is actually where the real action is going on, which can't be seen at visible light wavelengths, but can be seen at radio or yep. far infrared wavelengths. And so this is essentially the, the, the nursery, the beginnings, the birth of some of these what will be new stars. Yes, so this uh, has already formed new stars. Yep. Um, we can look at a simulation of our formation of one of these clusters. So this is a, a simulation from a few years ago. Yep. Uh, from. Uh, so we have a kind of a generic molecular cloud. So we gave it a roughly spherical molecular cloud and gave it some initial turbulence. Mm -hmm. If it was perfectly uniform, it would just shrink down into a sphere. But of course, these things are very irregular. You saw all the pictures. That's right. There's they lots didn't of start as perfect spheres. Exactly. They started as really complicated, as you'd imagine, given that all stuff blown out of supernovae and That's right. stars and swirling gas. And you can see, if we now zoom in, um, it shrinks again. This is similar to what happened after the Big Bang when galaxies right. formed. It's a gravitational instability. Only now it's on the scale of a few light years rather than a few million light years. So, but it's still the same process. You get that gravitational stability, it pulls more gas in, which is more, so it pulls more gas in, and you get that clumpiness. That's right. Now, the trouble with most simulations of this is that actually they form stars too fast and too effectively. They basically turn the entire giant molecular cloud into stars very quickly. And we know that doesn't actually happen. Most giant molecular clouds only lose a small fraction of their mass to stars, and most of it stays in the form of gas, and it takes much longer than the basic theories say. So the, so the basic theories are too efficient at producing They're stars. They're too good at producing stars. Um, what we do see is we get these lumps, mm -hmm. um, or, or proper lids, and these actually form spinning disks, which we can see. Okay. So what you do is you get a star in the middle and a spinning disk of gas around it, and the gas funnels into the middle to form the star, and the leftover bits of dust and gas will form the planets. So this is an image from OMA, the sensitive submillimeter telescope in yes. Chile. That's right. So what we're seeing, I guess, in this disk is we're seeing that clump at the center from the star, and then we're seeing the bits on the outside. Which will be forming the planets eventually, and we'll yep. talk much more about those in the planets course. Um, here's an artist's impression of these things. So again, yep. a lot of the gas has gone to the center, forming the sun, and you've got small amounts around the outside, which are forming the, um, the planets and comets and asteroids and other things like this. And so it's kind of because of this sim similar origin that as we talk about later, that they all have about the same age in the solar system. The stars and the planets are roughly the same age. Yes, and they formed at about the same time. You've got the whole cloud that shrank down, formed the spinning disk, much like we were talking about for galaxies yep. earlier, only much smaller, and the middle bit turns into the sun and the outer bits turn into planets. But there is complication here. When okay. you look at these things, often, instead of, you see the disk, but you also see stuff being squirted out in opposite directions, like you can see here. That's right. I mean, these are quite really large-scale jets shooting out of this central spinning stellar nursery. And they can look quite stunning. I mean, this is like a Goya painting or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. this. And what we think is happening is once again, we don't know what's going on. So magnetic fields and turbulence. <laughs> so just like the corona, we've got the magnetic fields, which are probably trapped in this giant molecular cloud. And as it shrinks down, you just imagine lots of rubber bands yep. from the roof to the floor of this room. Yep. And I put my arm around them and start swirling around. They get wound up really twice and they go twang, speaking technically, and squirt stuff out in both directions. So as that, magne that magnetism, that magnetic fields get wound and then they release, they squirt out well, how jets of material. And yeah. I mean, details are extremely obscure and not very well understood because it's magnetic fields and magnetic, mm. which we've already talked about as being really complicated. But the, I guess the point here is we see it. We can physically see with our telescopes that this is actually happening yes. or something like it. Uh, and this is probably one of the two reasons that stops this formation being too good. One reason uh. is that you get these very bright stars like the ones in the middle here, yep. whose radiation blows away the gas. So you have these really bright energetic stars and they kind of blow some gas out. So yep. that limits some of this stuff that can yep. turn into stars. But here's a more modern simulation of star formation. And this one now includes the effect of this radiation blowing gas away and the jets being fired out. Okay, so these are these two processes we just talked about now yep. budgeted in. Yes. So you can see the different things are forming. And so this is a couple forming. of million years? Yes, this is 2.4 million years, and we're going to look at it from a different direction, and then we're going to zoom in and see what's going to keep on going. Yep. And we'll start seeing particular jets, these jets being squirted out, and that disrupts the gas around mm -hmm. a particular area, 
and that then slows down the star formation because the gas that was going to fall in gets blown away by the jets or by the radiation. Yeah. And so, and that's kind of why these initial simulations were too efficient. They weren't taking that into account. Yes. So this is our overall understanding of what's happening here, that we start obviously at the Big Bang, we get slight lumps, they collapse to form galaxies, the stars of the galaxies explode and produce gas, and this produces giant molecular clouds, these beautiful dense glass clouds. These in turn collapse because of their gravity in rather complicated ways, form these spinning disks of gas, the protoplanetary or protosolar disk. And it's out of this that both the Sun and the Earth formed.